Hey guys, welcome to J Reviews. I am Iceman, and the game we're going to be covering today, as you can see on the screen right here, is Dungeon Keeper Mobile. Always love that. Alright, so, the reason I'm covering this game to today is because EA announced, as we'll see here, in sad news, that they are bringing this game to a close after the game's been running since, I believe, 2014. Um, so, and I've been personally playing this game ever since, and it's annoying how this happens all the time. Um, yeah, I've been playing the game since it was released back then, and have thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it's definitely a divisive game, and I can 110% see why many people don't like it, especially people who played the original Dungeon Keeper 1 and 2 on DOS and Windows, I think. Yeah, right on both. Um, but me, personally, I'm a massive fan of tower defense games, and so if you just, if you just treat the game as a tower defense game, that's it. Um, then you you may look on the game more favorably. And all the time that I was playing it, since the game's release, I never spent a dollar on it. But I'm going to go through everything that this game is as a way of, like, firstly just documenting how the game looks before this is lost to time. And this is something that is going to be the case with many online games, that one day the developers come along and then you have these kind of things happen where they just turn up and, you know, and decide, well, we're going to close that game that's been running for so long. It's the sad fact of when it comes to anything that's, you know, online related, unfortunately. Especially ones that run only online. You know, like any of these type of games. Oh, no, we're having connection problems. Give me a sec. Okay, so to go th go through this in the traditional format that I've been doing J, J reviews, firstly, you, now you know when the game was released. So it was released back in uh, 2013, of August 2013. Um, definitely to negative reviews, as I've said, many people compared this to the original first two games, and I completely see why. Um, yeah, but each to their own. As for story and narrative to this game, there pretty much is almost zero. Um, this is completely an online based game where the whole basis is about creating your own dungeon and then going off and fighting other people. And then through the money that you gain from that, using that to improve your dungeon. Now for me personally, I absolutely adored this game, um, though it's sort of been in, in bits and bursts, like I would come back to this game, play a little bit, stop for six months, then come back and do some more. But especially during the pandemic that occurred over the last two years and all the lockdowns that we had, at least in my country of Australia, um, there was so little to do. And this game just gave me something to do. Just, you know, even just the slow methodical type planning that goes into this game, where you just set out a plan and go, maybe I'm going to go and for example, these are what are called, called reinforced walls. I can go in and go, well, my goal is to get this up to level 13, and then maybe it'll take me, like, several months to six months or something like that, because I don't spend any money, to actually achieve that. And then slowly see the results of what you've done. Now, you could say, well, your dungeon doesn't look that great for someone who's been playing that long, and fair enough. That's because I was, do I was doing this under the challenge of just never spending any money. But anyway, that's just me. I want to talk about the game itself. So, as I said, there is no practically no narrative to it. You get a little bit of a narrative when you start the tutorial stuff. when Because when you start this game, you literally just have this dungeon here. That's it. And then you bit by bit, you need to create paths and dig, dig out the, um, the whole system. Because when you start, all of these are filled in with like rocks and things. They take some time, unless you want to spend gems which is where the microtransactions come in. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but if you don't, then you've just got to sit there and wait for them to dig through. And then there's some bigger ones that can take an entire day to get through. But eventually, you make paths. 
And then for every one of these that you actually choose to unlock, you are on un firstly get creating an another place where you can get resources, but you're also creating a place where people can attack you from. Okay, so as in terms of the feel of this game, obviously artificially it has similarities to the first one, uh, two Dungeon Keeper games, but I would say it's a very surface level. I mean, there's some stuff, digging for resources, yes, though you primarily get them through the resource points from here. Um, I, the Really, the feel of this game that, that this most corresponds to, for me, I would say is tower defense. Totally tower defense. Because it's all about... Not so much that, but like, you know, building up things and creating better defenses so that when people attack you, you get to see how it plays out. Now, in for the sake of just showing things, now, I'll show you show you some... Um, a case of me getting my ass kicked, but this, this is what happens. So that's back and relax. This may have gotten a little bumpy. And I'll show some gameplay as part of this. So what's happening here is they're sending in uh, one of their over I think it's overlords um, to dash through here, and they're using spells that reduce my creatures to chickens, and that's from the original Dungeon Keeper. And through that you can damage them. And the particular type of overlord that he's using allows him to dig through walls. And he's, he's attacking my structures. So the goal of the person attacking is to, obviously, get to the dungeon heart, or at least cause as much damage as possible to get above 50%. If it's above 50%, then it's considered a victory. And the greater that you destroy for the attacker, the better the reward in gems, as well as the resources that you can get. So this person, he's, gone, he's going straight for my resources. He took out one of my um, gold stone places. He's now going for the stone one. I could speed this up, because you have this little button here that enables you to speed things up of how this functions, if I do that really quickly. But while this, while this game still exists online, I just want to show off some gameplay of how this was when it was up, for the sake of preservation. I mean, there's no way to preserve the game itself, I don't think, unless there's fan-made servers or something that come about later. But who knows? Very unlikely. But most likely he's going to come across here and take out my dungeon tower shortly. But my goal was to, you know, create as much damage to them, to the attacking people as possible. From the rooms that we create and from the defenses. My plan, by the way, I'm going to be showing, so this is one defense where I'm attacked. I'll show myself attacking someone else and how that works. It may not be a successful attack, but I'll show how it works. As you saw, he only narrowly managed to take out my dungeon heart. And what happened there is that... Immortal. Immortal, that's it, right? Not Overlord, it's Immortals. Um, yeah, so he took out my... One of my models, which was a dragon defending the place. Part of it. Um, also, he quit as soon as he'd made enough of damage. Well, that's Perhaps your imps should be the ones slapping you, Keeper. 
they love to taunt you with different sound effects each time. So um, this is the forces that he used. He used the model, these two, skeleton. I think they're orcs, mages, tr trolls. Um, they say paladin. To me, it's more necromancer. Um, or is it necromancer? I think it's paladin. Then he these are the spells he used. So he used the chicken one to turn my people into chickens, and then you can just tap on them to damage them. Um, it's a bomb at bomb wall. This has the 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 way that this has worked has changed much in the in the in the in the time of the game being out. Back in the beginning, what ha would happen is when you would use it, it would blast a whole area of effect, like an AOE. Um, but now the way it works is in a straight line, like as in the, just the point where you use it to drop. I'll show you when I do my t do my attack. Um, this one here is a uh, defenses disabling spell. So the way that works is you just use it, and then you just tap the places that you want to disable a trap. And you get, uh, I think originally you can only disable one, but if you level it up, you gain you up to three that you can take out, I think. Three or four, I forget. And this last one, the zapper, or the lightning, whatever it's called, um, that one disables rooms. If you haven't noticed already, I'm just sort of doing this on the fly, so... Yeah. Alright, so when we're at this... When we're at our dungeon screen, this is from which we, c we can choose what to send our minions, the... These people. And currently their efficiency is zero if I, s if I slap them like this. I never grow tired of witnessing the endless abuse of a magazine. So through that you motivate them and then that speeds up the the building of anything. So when I say building, that's like upgrading defenses, upgrading rooms, or placing things from scratch. You cannot store any more. When your resources are full, just like he said just to me, you can't store any more. Because my gold here is at the current maximum. You can see the maximum. Ooh, goodies. Yep, goodies. So we have gold. Which is mainly used, mainly for training stuff. Um, sometimes for certain rooms you do use it to upgrade them, like this one here, battery. But mainly use it like here. I'm, I'm gonna like to show you how this works. Um, if I scroll down here, and by the way, I'm I should have said at the beginning. I'm playing this via the emulator BlueStacks because this game just doesn't work on my mobile phone anymore. It's that old, but it still works in BlueStacks. And at least if you play it through blue stacks, you had the ability to use the mouse. Rather than having to use an annoying mobile screen. Anyway, so if you want to upgrade something, you just simply click on what you want to upgrade, and then click. Like so. And if you want to speed it up, this is where the microtransaction stuff comes in. You can click here. I never used it, but it is there. But, you, but gems are essential. It, at times in getting things done quicker. Um, otherwise, you just keep getting raided and um, you just keep losing resources. Sometimes, like, I've got, currently got 230 gems here. That can be used to speed things up, like, whether whatever, whatever it is. So from, so, from leveling up the immortal to helping me build a room quicker, like a building room upgrade, I should say. Um, upgrade walls and defenses, that type of thing. Um, to go through everything, we have our resource points, as I've said. The more of these you have, the more resources you have coming in. As you upgrade them, that it increases the amount of resources that you get generated over time. But people can attack you, so for every one you unlock, you've unlocked a new place that someone can attack you from. You have the stone quarries. Currently, I can't upgrade it because of the level of my dungeon heart. Um, but these create stone, through which is here. This is the most important resource, in my opinion. Though also, you have the resource of... Well, firstly, the green gems. And you have these, that are mainly used for very specific things. They're mainly used for immortals that need them at certain points. Like, once you've leveled them up to a point, it, they'll get restricted. Like, you can't upgrade them anymore unless you have a certain amount of these. And again, that goes into microtransactions. Which, again, I'll go into in a sec. Um, yeah, so we've done stone. As I said, what well, that's gold. Now, okay, now I'll go into microtransactions. So this is the reason, main reason why everybody hated it. And that's fair enough. Um, 
so green, so sparkly. Ooh, okay, that's new. Um, normally, what you would see when you hit this, I don't see it right now. But normally, what would be there'd be all these boxes telling you that to buy gems, you need to spend X amount of money and that type of thing. So that's that's the main thing this game was hated for. As I say, totally fair enough. But it is what it is. Um, yeah, you have your dungeon heart in the middle. This is the primary target when people attack you and for when you attack other dungeon dungeons held by dungeon keepers. As things, uh, buildings have various levels so that they know the more you level them up, the more health health that they have um, and they have knock-on effects. So this, for example, for every time I leveled it up, then my other rooms can therefore upgrade higher because they have their caps which is bound by what the level of the dungeon heart is. The same occurs with traps. Traps are things like, see I've got like the chicken bomb, um, got poison traps, freeze traps which slow things down and by the way the poison traps just you know poison things other than just hurt stuff. Doesn't harm skeletons though. Um, you have spike traps that just I don't know. You know, strike up and attack things as they pass over them. You have fire burst traps that cause fire damage on whatever comes in contact with it. That is extremely useful against troll enemies. And when I said orcs, it's actually trolls. So, oh, I'll get into that. So, other than that, you have bug zappers, which is electric. Um, these are hidden until something comes in range of it. And then zaps them and they're stunned for like a few seconds. If you have two of them right next to each other, then whatever it is won't get through. Um, you have cannon traps, which just shoot in, shoot in a straight line. There cannot be other like that. If I move it here, as you see, wherever the, the white is going, that's the directions it will attack. So if I was to place it there, it would attack in all directions. Like in all horizontal and um, vertical directions. Um, we also have... The anti-air, extremely useful against airborne targets. So like if you see my immortal here, the dragon one, if I had that in range of that, like at someone else's base, it would therefore attack the target. Um, the only other one now is the Dante's Mounds, and that's just, I don't know, it's like a mini volcano, like throws fire. Um, I think that's all the trap types. For the room types, you have... Let me see. So I've mentioned the resource collection ones. So for the where the resources go, you have stuff like the treasury that holds gold. So obviously the higher the cap, the higher this will become. Um, you have the warehouse that stores stone. Again, the higher that is, the higher this value becomes. Then you have attacking based stuff or things that at least cause damage. You have the training room. This is the primary place to upgrade your minions and your immortals. As you saw me doing through here, you go through here, pick what you want to upgrade if it's unlocked for that to upgrade to another to the next level. And if you have the sufficient gold, you can then upgrade it. And you can choose either to upgrade your minions or to upgrade your immortals, the, of the ones that you have, un have unlocked. And here's, and by the way, that's what I was talking about with the with the purple gems, as you see here, because it's got that amount there, which I don't have. I can't upgrade him any further until I have that many. Next up, unholy temple that slows any target down and causes very a very minute amount of damage. Uh, I've I've not really spent a lot of resources upgrading these because they don't really cause a lot of damage. I'm sure. It, it's more like cumulative, like as in causes good effects over time when things are coming in range. It's just there's much better damage rooms. Um, this one, Dark Library, highly useful. This affects affects your mana level. So mana is here. The higher the cap, the, whole, the more spells you can use when you attack. It also, the level of it affects what level your mages can be. So if you see the little peoples all around it. That's the mages who are ra ranged only units. 
Like here, if I went to upgrade it, and if I could, if I had the appropriate resources, which I don't, but if I did, then here is what it would affect. Like, it would affect the health of the room, the level of damage that the, that the room does, the level of mana that it does per hour, um, and it increases your overall maximum mana cap. So if I was to upgrade this room, my mana cap would increase by 25. Uh, next up, Hatchery. So this one just, well, up to a point, upgrading it increases your overall minion cap. So minion caps is just that, is the maximum, like for every minion that you summon, they, they take up a certain amount of the cap. Like if you if you were to go and create a... At least you don't have to worry about feeding them. <laughs> Yeah, well, anyway, different ones use different amounts of the cap. I forget what it is. But you have the different types. I'll get onto the minions themselves in a sec. Um, next up, guard post. This is, you need this in order to have immortals. So as you get the appropriate things to unlock them, then you can slowly get more and more minions. So these are the minions I've got at the moment. I don't I usually toot my own horn, but... Toot, toot. <laughs> Yes, so that's Horny, um, named after the guy talking. You have Tiny. I don't know why he gets that name. This immortal cool things down round here. Very good for like range because he's a flying unit for attacking things from up high. But I didn't really find him that useful personally when I attack things, just because air defenses would just take him out. It turns out all imps are not created equal. Girth and length aside, they still have only a room temperature IQ when put together. As you see, you get many comments. So the next up is Deegan Dugger. I don't know why it gets that name. But... This is exceptionally good if you want to just have a have a, an attack where someone who just digs through the walls and then gets to its target. But that's about it. That's about the use of it, because it only attacks singular targets when it does do an attack. Like, once it gets in contact with enemy minions, it, it just attacks a singular one at a time. Compared to, say, Horny here, when he's attack, it, it does it in, like, an arc around him. Here's an immortal that likes getting down and dirty. So next up is Swampus, level six, which is, for me is level six at the moment. Um, yeah, as you see, they all have their pluses and negatives. You can see this as it says here. They're very slow moving, but they have they tend to have a lot of health. If you if I was to bother to have been upgrading this all the way. He's, he's one that I was spending a bit of time upgrading. Um, so, Glargle. Get no angel fish. This terror from the deep is the godfather of the sea. <laughs> so, what this one does. Um, this one's very good at disabling rooms that it's attacking. So, it it's shoots out like a little ink glob. And when it hits the room, it disables it. Useful. Not as good as Horny, but it has its own things that it's good at too. Doesn't do as much damage though. Like he's even at twenty level twenty four, he's only doing six hundred and seven. <laughs> Compared to, fair enough, he's level thirty three, but seven hundred and five. I was hoping to get these maxed out before the game, you know, was closed down, but that ain't gonna happen. Very sad day. Uh, last up of the ones I've got unlocked anyway. With this immortal, you can really take the bull by the horns, as they say. <laughs> so Mortimer, level six. More just a straight up damage. Apparently, he does a lot of damage to structures, so just buildings. And apparently, he can hurl enemy minions out of the dungeon. They all, all, the, all of the different immortal types have their own positives and negatives to, to them. Um, okay. Then, rooms-wise, next up is the workshop. So you need this to create traps. So the, the better the better the level, the more traps you have unlocked. 
and the more damage that it does and also the more health the room has. So as you see here you have your various traps that you can go through. I've already explained most of them. I think the only one I didn't talk about was reinforced walls. These you need for defending against players. No, not e nothing against the computer, just totally for when players attack you. So the better the reinforced wall level, which you can see here. Oh. Let them try to huff and puff and blow this down. The better that is, the better the damage it can create against. Because when people use bomb wall, that has damage attached to it. I'll go through spells in a sec too, actually. But yeah, the better that is, the better it can defend against. Um, let me think. Two rooms left. So, torture chamber. So, this is just straight up fast shooting, but low damage. But it's a lot better than the unho unholy temple. Very fast shooting, the greater the level. Every, every well, every few levels you can upgrade the temper temptress, which I'll talk about in a sec. Um, last room to talk about is the guild there. This one obviously is is in conjunction with being in a guild. So for the longest time, since you know a lot of people have left the game, um, I've been running a guild by myself and just with the characters, well the other alternative um, accounts that I had. But I stopped using the other accounts ages ago, and for the last couple of years was just mainly using this one. But from this you can withdraw minions from the from the guild and use them in your attacks and you can also donate them as you can see from the totals under here this is the current amount donated so when I withdraw things from the guild lair they come out but I can also donate from here okay next up I'll talk about minions types so we have the skeleton as you see takes less damage from room defenses they don't they're, they're just more like just very basic ground troops with no nothing really special about them but in large numbers they can be useful um, next up whoever said brains over brawn clearly didn't have any trolls <laughs> <laughs> um next up is the troll highly useful at damaging doors traps and hostile rooms but as you see the weakness Eight times damage from fire sources. Fire sources being these. Those two. And also any immortals that do fire damage. But they're highly useful at taking out traps. Better start hiding the chickens, keeper. <laughs> uh, next up is the bile dam demon. So these will seek out resource points. That's their primary thing. And when there are no more, more resource points, then they start attacking the other stuff. But they'll just go in a straight line for what it, whatever is the nearest resource to it and destroy it. And they tend to have a lot of health. Uh, next up... Ah, oh, they're called next. Excellent way to expand your army. Yes. So they are called necromancers, that's right. Um, yeah, so necromancers, by the name, as the name should in still. Um, they raise the undead from any defeated minions. Or living ones, anyway. Um, so, I've got mine up to, you know, summoning up to 22, so for every one of those, they'll summon up to 22, maximum. Highly useful, those. Uh, so, next ah, up... It I've come to the conclusion that their power comes from their beards. <laughs> So the next up is the Warlock. So just as they're, they're very, they go down very easily from any damage. But they, I don't know, they, they do a lot of good rain damage. So the better the level, the more damage you do. Highly, 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 highly useful. Because then at least you don't have to use bomb walls in order to get to where you need to get to. Um, like as in a nearby room, you can just have them go up and destroy it. <laughs> I'm always afraid we'll get the sparkly one someday. So, next up, Vampire. Um, these will just seek out, once you've summoned them, they will just go straight for the Dungeon Heart and try and destroy it. After that, they'll go for whatever else. But, that's their primary thing. You don't want to use too many of them, because even a singular one uses up a lot of your 
summoning queue, like the minion cap. But having at least one or two in, a, in an attack, highly, highly, highly beneficial. These I've never used. My favorite mix of cute and deadly. Ah. But the ghosts are are um, flying units, and they tend to seek out. Let me see. They will seek out. Doesn't say. I think they just. Oh, there we go. Seeks the closest room. So they'll seek the closest room. But they they tend to go down very easily from room room defenses. So I never used them. Next up. We all need some company from time to time. Is the mistress. Um, so what they do is they will they will inspire or to think of a better word I don't, I don't know um, but they will cause all all other minions around them to to attack and move at twice the speed so they are even having one of these around you because you want to have at least one in a, an attack or at least that's the how I've always played even if you have one and it's as long as as long as it's living and within range of your main minion force they will just speed through everything and lastly I didn't I never use this one either I'm sure even you could handle a dragon of this size mm, I could so the next up is the dragon whelp um, so again flying unit seeks out the closest room some people use these. I never have. I've never seen the, the point. Again, they have a lot of good health, but yeah, they still go down really easily. Alright, so that's the minion types. Last up is the spell types. So we have Cluck Off. You can imagine where they got that word from. Um, so that, as I said before, so what this does is turns enemy minions into chickens and then you just tap them and they take damage as as per the level the d damage amount that's here dragon breath just does a flame on the on the on the target region that you put it on i never got this to a point where it was really useful but i imagine if you leveled this up to the max it would be really good next up to me what is probably one of the most important spells in the game bomb wall so this just you, wherever you click, it will drop, and it will just take out whatever is there. Oh, well, as if there's re reinforces, reinforced walls, or uh, just empty spots in the world. So if I was to, do, someone was to do this across here, it would act like. Even with dungeon labor, you reach a point of diminishing returns. It doesn't like so. And by the way, that is how you dig spots out. As I've just demonstrated. Ooh, and if you were to want to fill them in, you do it like so. Okay, next up, disabling trap. Um, so, as the name that suggests, as I mentioned, and as I mentioned before, use this to disable traps. So, as you level it up. You gain greater uses, and you can and you can disable a greater amount of things. When if when this is at like at level one, you can barely disable a thing. But as you keep plugging away, getting more and more experience with the spells, cause, because that's how it works with the spells. As you use them, they gain experience. As you see on these things, like with experience bar. So as they experience, they gain new features. So with some things, it's for greater damage, like with with cluck off here. And Dragon Breath. Other things, it may allow it to do extra things, which was the case with Disable Trap. And it increased the amount of uses of it. Um, last up is Thunderbolt. So this just disables rooms and it inflicts minor damage. Highly useful because it keeps things disabled for a short amount of time. Um, just trying to think if I've missed anything. And as you see, this is how you collect resources. As I'm going through that. I'm sure your imps will put this to good use. Okay. Um, before I go into demonstrating what an attack is like, um, they have tournaments every week. You can't build a staircase to success without a few corpses. So if you meet the quota, so as you see here, for the next hour and 53 minutes, this the tournament qualifier is running. If I was to get 
at least 300 stars that would qual qualify me for the tournament. And then that runs for a couple of days. You get resources at the end of it. Usually it's gems and purple stones. So that's an alternate way of getting pep lots of purple stones. Usually you get about, what is it, 120 or something, or 200. It does depend on the, t on the tournament. You have the League. So as you do more and more attacks on Dungeon Keepers and accrue stars and things, you very slowly make your way up the leagues. So you start here at Bronze League, and what this does, of the, well, of the various leagues, is it adds a bonus onto when you do an attack. So anyway, as I was saying, there's Bronze League, as you see, gives plus 400. Silver, plus 1,150. Gold, 1,900. Obsidian, 2,600. And Dread League, of which there's the, the, the three different bits. Dread, of what I'm up to, 3,200 plus. So if I if if I do an excess, successful attack, it will give me extra resources based off that. If you see up here for the loot bonus, that's how that factors in. So if I beat someone, I get an additional 250,000 gold and stone plus this as well for the... I forget what that is. That's I think that's the... No, it won't. Combat points. I almost don't find anywhere where that's used. That's why I don't remember what it is. But it says here, use it to upgrade your dungeon heart and recruit certain immortals. So that comes in with some of the ones I haven't got already. Like this one. Perhaps you should rethink that. Which, as you see, it requires me to have dungeon level 200. Dungeon level is what is what is here. So my current level is 156. And that takes a very long amount of time to go up. I've been playing this game since since release. So as you can see, I don't think I'm going to get that done bef before that point in time. Which is unfortunate. Um, yeah. Uh, is there anything else I haven't covered before I show an attack? As you go... Th y when you are in a attacked, and when you do attack someone, you can watch replays. So as I showed you earlier on, you can scroll through when you've been attacked, which is the defend replay, so when when you've defended, you can browse replays of any time you've been attacked. If, if, the, if the attack by the attacker was successful, you'll see it in red. If you, we don't see any here, but if there was any that where I was able to beat, like my defenses, dungeon was able to beat them, then this would be like a yellow color. Like here. So these are some of the attacks that I've done. Where even though I only re got a very low percentage on them, I was able to take out the dungeon heart, so it was, it was successful. Uh, each day that you go into the game, you can click on this. And this gives you a bunch of things. I've even seen this, this type of thing in Pokemon Go. So it just gives you a set of goals to achieve, and if you if you achieve it, then then you'll get like a a chest that you, that you can open, and it gives you a certain amount of gold. So it's like a loot loot drop kinda. Um, if you ever don't like any of these, you can click the X, and then that will generate a new one. I don't want to get rid of it because then these are all good ones. Okay, so I think that's about. Oh, the only other things. There's two things actually. So if you ever want to build something, you need to go into the build menu. Um, if I want to build a room, I'd have to go in here. Same for traps. If I need, if I wanted to get more imps, or see the current ones I've got, buy more gems, which you can't do anymore. Um, resources. Here we go. This is what I was wanting to show you before. Here is where much of the microtransactions comes in, so if I wanted to go and spend some of my gems to get more resources, I would go here and waste, or use I should say, um, my gems on those. And you can get various boosts. I'm not sure what these are, I never used them. Um, I, if I remember correctly, they give bonuses to various things, which if you click here... Kind of a waste of time if you ask me, but yeah. I'm speaking as someone who never spent money on the game, so there are people who spent I don't even know, but just countless amounts of money on this game to upgrade it up to the max. I mean, if you want to play that way, 
then you can. But that's up to you. Alright, so lastly, to, to finish things off, I'm going to see if I've missed anything from what I normally cover on this channel, from this, from this show. No. Alright, so let's see. When you go to attack someone, you need to pick the immortal that you want to attack with. Very important, otherwise you'll just go in with the one that you last set as the immortal. Because when you're logged off, whichever immortal you have, that'll be the one that, that is in defense. I personally always like to have Tiny as the one to sit around because that can just... You know, since it's, fly it's a flying unit, so any units that come close can do fire damage. But when you want to attack, you need to pick the model that you want to attack with. And then... Time to have some fun. <laughs> go out and have some fun. Let's hope this is a successful one I'm going to show you. Oh yeah, that's going to be a successful one. Okay. We'll see. I think it's going to be a successful one. Here I am using the bomb wall. What I was using there is Cluck Off, and then I was using Thunderbolt. Well done. I just sent them in my vampires, taking a dungeon heart. Keep rocking. We have much to build. Ah. And I'm kicking the butt. I hope I can get 100% on this guy. Good chance of it, we'll see. Oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna get 100%. Best way to show the game, haha. <laughs> And I just totally kicked his ass. And captured his immortal. Because if you defeat them in battle, you capture them and can use them in your next attack. And if you get 100%, you hear... You'll hear a horny speak in a sec. Is he showing me the resources that I got from that attack? You have the, res the attack that I got from the actual attack itself and the League of Evil, which adds re extra resources based on the your um, level in the league. And these are the spells that I used that were gaining experience and the minions that I used. Uh, yes. The flames of hell burst forth in fiery glory to honor your name. Damn straight. It looks like we have some legitimate competition round here. And as you see, from that one attack, I was able to get myself into the tournament. Now when you return back to your screen, you can replenish your mana if you have enough in reserve. Then you must choose which minions you s seek to have in your next attack. I tend to always do this based on my current cap. But other people liked other things. But that's what I like. And then make sure I got Tiny in defense before I log off. Yeah, so that is Dungeon Keeper. Of your army is ready. As a lover of tower defense games, I absolutely adore this game. Um, I found this to be a really good thing to just play in the background as just a quick game to go, go into every day and just, you know, give you some kind of long-term goal. Because I've played a lot of tower defense games in my, t in you know, in my time. Starting out with Plants vs. Zombies and then moving on to um, Cursed Treasure and heaps of other type of tower defense games. But nothing really grabbed me as much as this one does, because this one offers really, like, 
very long-term type planning that you can do. So to see that this game is coming to an end is a really sad day. I mean, it's a fact with all online games, but still, it's always a sad thing because you pump so much of your life into them and then to see them gone is just, you know, it's unfortunate. All that just is, you know, just goes into the void. Will there be any more Dungeon Keeper games? I hope so. Um, those those will be, if there is, they'd be more the single player direction. Um, yeah, so that's about it. So this is more of a ad hoc kind of review this time. I haven't really gone in with much of a script compared to how I do the other review v review videos. And you're just catching me on a first take. Hence why i am you know got the stutters and everything. But, yeah. Hope you've enjoyed watching this review. So... If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more videos in this series, be sure to hit the subscribe button and just check out my channel for further videos and you'll find out what else is available. So with, it, with that, this is Iceman of J Reviews signing out. Guys, have a good one and a sad, sad day to see Dungeon Keeper coming to an end. Live long and prosper. Alright guys, have a good one.